I think this is an area where we need greater advances. To date, people have looked at whether apathy is associated with the standard biomarkers for Alzheimer's disease, for example, amyloid PET or tau PET. For amyloid PET, the results are actually inconclusive. Some studies find a relationship between apathy and amyloid PET in specific areas and other studies don't. For tau, there's far less information, but some data have indicated that apathy is associated with tau in the orbital frontal cortex, but we need more consistent data and replication before we could establish that. What we need to know, though, is still why some people have apathy associated with Alzheimer's disease and other people don't. There, there was a great review article by Laharan et al. that showed us the different areas of the brain that would be associated with apathy. And those actually transcend psychiatric diagnosis. So they're found in people with Parkinson's disease, apathy, Alzheimer's disease, apathy, and apathy associated with stroke. So we know some of the areas that are involved. Now we have to find biomarkers. My lab did some of the early work that established that in Alzheimer's disease in particular, Apathy was associated with changes in the uh, dopaminergic brain reward system. And that was part of the rationale for the methylphenidate trial that was released recently. And that trial uh, actually was successful and showed that uh, apathy can be treated with methylphenidate, that there is a small to medium effect size uh, when you give methylphenidate on top of psychosocial interventions. So everyone was given a psychosocial intervention. We compared placebo and drug and still found that on top of it, methylphenidate helped with apathy. As we're using blood-based biomarkers more and more, Hopefully we can look at that. Um, as uh, this audience would be aware, when we look at the biomarkers and when they develop over the course of Alzheimer's disease, by the time people have mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease, and particularly in the severe stage, if you look at amyloid PET, we've already had a ceiling effect. So the changes that are happening in amyloid are much earlier in the disease. So that may uh, help us understand why we're not feel really finding a relationship with amyloid PET, perhaps if we looked earlier in the disease. And we do know that when you look for apathy earlier in the disease, it is, as I mentioned, a big predictor of conversion. So perhaps we have to look earlier in the disease. It may be that amyloid has already deposited in the neurocircuitry that we know is responsible for apathy and Alzheimer's disease.